marijuana. Lots of questions after my last post about neurologic disease and pot. There are others who requested more details. I've got Parkinson's. I have MS. I have a son with traumatic brain injury. I have a brain tumor. What about marijuana? Okay, you'll love the rest of this video. Stick with me. You're going to get some science. I will show you why cannabis is probably the most underutilized therapy for every neurologic disease, and here's why. But please note, I don't prescribe marijuana in my practice. It is legal for doctors in other states to do so, but there are FDA approved forms of cannabidiol that are available in my state that can be used. Unfortunately, they're woefully underutilized for the diseases I'm about to discuss. What I wanted to know years ago was understanding that there is an entire neurochemistry of signaling lipids called endocannabinoids that's integrated throughout the brain. What does this system do? We even have cannabinoid receptors, the CB1 and CB2 receptors in our brains and our skin for the marijuana to link up with. We neuroscientists have been interested in this for a long time, but in the early 2000s, a much broader based research and clinical interest exploded. It turns out that endocannabinoids are made in neurons and function as a neurotransmitter. And here's the crazy part, it works in reverse. These chemicals actually travel backwards in the nerve axon and regulate the cell's response to the excitatory signal that's being transmitted up the axon. This is so cool. It explains why cannabinoids are so effective in controlling a wild and violent brain injury patient by down-regulating the out-of-control excitatory neuron storms. It works the same with seizure suppression, which, by the way, is why cannabis is finally approved in most states for pediatric seizures. Similarly, these same mechanisms could be used in chronic pain, anxiety, depression, all of that. I've got to add that these endocannabinoid receptors are not only in the brain, but also in the skin. That's why topical application of versions of CBD and THC can bind to these receptors and suppress the incoming pain signal. Imagine how useful that could be in treating peripheral neuropathy pain in the feet of diabetics or utilized to control local pain after a surgical procedure. With just this alone, we could say that manipulation of these endocannabinoid receptors should be priority research and justify clinical use. But here's the most important thing in this entire video. And if this is the only take home from this, I've done my job. Cannabinoids are neuroprotective in brain trauma. Parkinson's, Huntington's chorea, ALS, ischemic brain injury of strokes, and Alzheimer's. This is the real benefit of this medication. 25 years ago, I postulated that central nervous system disease processes all have in common excitotoxicity, oxidative stress, and inflammation. We now know that cannabinoids can be neuroprotective by reining in the destructive influences of neurotoxins released when the brain is damaged. For doctors who are watching, it's mostly glutamate. And doctors, not only is it protecting neurons, but also astrocytes, microglia, oligodendrocytes, which make the myelin, which is of key importance in multiple sclerosis. Cannabinoids also suppress the release of inflammatory cytokines and therefore are anti-inflammatory, not only after stroke or traumatic brain injury, but also in the slow progression of Alzheimer's MS or Parkinson's and ALS. Also, part and parcel of every injury is the release of free radicals, oxidants. Cannabinoids gin up the antioxidant machinery in the brain. So the cannabinoids are neuroprotective, that is they protect the brain because they bind neurotoxins, suppress inflammation, and they scavenge free radicals. Current drug therapies for these slow degenerative diseases have only been directed at one of these destructive processes and not addressing the other two. For example, one candidate currently in clinical trials for Alzheimer's is focusing on the blocking of the receptor of the excitotoxin glutamate, but leaves the inflammatory and oxidation aspect of the destructive sequence out altogether. Similarly, a new experimental drug for ALS works primarily as a potent antioxidant, but that doesn't address the inflammatory or the excitotoxic components of the destructive sequence. There are other examples of drugs aimed at the inflammatory aspects of these chronic diseases, but you get the idea. The result is that 
They all are, or will only be marginally effective, unless the entire sequence is addressed simultaneously. My thoughts are that cannabinoids may just be one such intervention.